Well, staying with the theme of the, uh, photography, and the American photographer Paul Strand helped establish photography as an art form rather than simply a means of documentary. His body of work spanned six decades and covered subjects across America, Europe and Africa, yet he remains less well-known than some of his contemporaries. Well, an exhibition at London's V&A may redress that. It's the first time that Paul Strand's work has been on show in the UK since 1976, and the show's curator, Martin Barnes, joins me now. Lovely to have you here on show. Showcase. So, as we mentioned too, there, he, he's a significant figure, Paul mm -hmm. Strand, but perhaps less well known than his contemporaries. Why is yeah. that? I think possibly because, um, well, he didn't photograph celebrities for a start. Mm. Um, he was interested in photographing ordinary people um, and communities and getting uh, stuck into working in communities for long periods of time. And he made, uh, in the second half of his career, he made a series that uh, were produced in the form of books and a series of prints. And the prints are often quite small and they're very jewel-like and very beautiful images. So I think um, sometimes the, the, the notion is that Strand was uh, perhaps less showy than a lot of other photographers and less newsworthy in some ways. He spent a long time in places. Now, what's exciting partly about this exhibition is that we've got nine new works that haven't really been seen before. Tell me about that. Yeah, so we have um, nine pictures which we bought for the permanent collection of the Victoria and Albert Museum. Um, which show Strand working in the Outer Hebrides in the 1950s. And for me, this was quite important to show Strand's work in, in the UK. Um, I mean, he's a photographer who began his career in New York in 1910. So here's a great American modernist photographer working in, in Europe and in the far-flung reaches of the Outer Hebrides. Yeah, that's quite extraordinary, isn't it? And I understand that he spent a lot of time in these places just getting to know people before he actually even picked up his camera. Yeah, so sometimes he'd go and set up in the town square or he'd, he'd get to know the local people, he'd get to in, be introduced to people through the local doctor, for example, and he'd just wait until people got used to him and, uh, and then he'd start taking the pictures when people had stopped posing and they'd relaxed, I think. When you look at this exhibition, a lot of the, um, the way in which they are um, printed, they're very dark, aren't they? Was that down to him? Was that a choice? Yeah, I mean, Strand's view of, of photographs was they were, they were quite low-key, they were quite moody, quite dark prints. Um, he often varnished them by hand. He made several different kinds of prints, often using platinum in the paper, a very expensive metal but very beautiful printing technique. And they, they have a, a real physical quality. When you see them in the exhibition, you really understand him, him as a master printer. And he pioneered the decoy lens, so he was able to take photographs of people without them realising. That's right. So when he was a young man, when he was 24, 25 in New York City, um, he made pictures uh, of people on the street, very close up, very uncompromising looking pictures. And to do that, he, he screwed a brass lens that was very shiny on the front of a camera that uh, detracted people's attention from the direction that he was actually taking the picture, which was under his arm. There's a famous photo, isn't there, of a blind woman, which ironically he took with this decoy lens, even though, bless her, she couldn't see what he was doing yes. anyway. Yes, yeah, I mean, it's a very tough looking, it's a brutal, tough kind of picture, very unlike art photography of that period, which looked more like impressionist painting. And, you know, it really questions the notion of what you can see and the notion of vision and perception and looking, mm. both in photography and in, in, uh, in reality. You mentioned Impressionist paintings there, and he pioneered photography as an art form. Some of his photographs were, were quite abstract. Yes, he was one of the first people to make uh, deliberately abstract photographs. And for him, he was trying to learn uh, what Picasso and Braque were doing. He was trying to understand their paintings and to try and make photographic equivalents of them. And he was operating really as well in a time, wasn't he, before many people were used to having their photograph taken, and that is yes. quite a different thing. Yeah, in fact, I've spoken to some people who were uh, young when they were photographed by Strand, nine, ten years old, and um, they, they, they actually hadn't seen a camera before. They hadn't, right. uh, hadn't been photographed. There's a woman we spoke to in a village in Italy, in Luzara, and uh, she remembers Strand being very deliberate, very slow, setting up the camera. And uh, she didn't know what this strange machine was that he was using to, 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 to you know, take this picture. Right. And it was only later that she, you know, she realised that uh, you know, this was a camera, this was a photograph. This is in the 1950s in a very poor area of rural Italy. Incredible. And yeah, a very famous photo we can briefly see before the end of the programme of, uh, of one of those that he took in Italy, um, of a family yes. uh, outside their house. And, and that's uh, quite a famous one, isn't it? Yeah, it's a very beautiful picture. It's actually very heavily staged and it's... Mm. Uh, um, a woman standing in a doorway with a, a, a family, her, her young sons uh, around her. We've run out of time, that's all we've got time for. Thank you for joining us.